Well, you know, we are studying this uh, horn, beast, from Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, and for a third time I repeat this, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the elect of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times in the dividing of time. That's three and a half years. Thus we understand that the beast, the little horn, the thing which exalts itself against all knowledge of right, the Antichrist, if you will, is the thing which wears down the elect, even as the classic Inquisition fulfilled this dire warning of prophecies. But how did it fulfill its role of thinking to change times and laws? Since times and laws stem from the Most High and are thus irrefutable, this by necessity must come from the mind of the diabolical one himself, Satan the devil. And it did in the form of a curious religious system devised by very hell itself. For time is created by Elohim alone for man, yet religious authority circumvents and thinks to change it. Notice they really cannot change it. That is impossible. The best they can do is obfuscate the true meaning of that which has been established since creation. And they or think or it thinks to do so by attacking the very heart of the moral law that Yahweh has given us, the fourth commandment. Rome admits that they changed the Sabbath. This is from remnant of God. That they supposedly have transferred the sanctity of Sabbath from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week, as we have seen in previous studies. And please feel free to go back and consult with those at will. But this is the change that I'm keying in on from the scriptures. The only change I can find, Rome admits they changed the Sabbath, but why? Paul tells us why in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, for who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he is Elohim, sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is God, by rebelling against Yahweh. He establishes himself as God with a capital G in the sinful minds and hearts of man in a vain attempt to overthrow that which has already been gouged and will be gouged by Messiah's second coming. According to Paul, he could only come after this dastardly false revelation is in place. John joins in by warning then of a worldwide false apostate worship and further devastation before the truth is finally restored. Regarding the restoration of Rome and the papacy little horn, scripture addresses this as well in the book of Revelation. We're going to look at three and uh, four and various others. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him five and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies just like Daniel talks about speaking great things. Power is given unto him to continue forty and two months. 
I think that's three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Yahweh to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell on heaven, in heaven. How, you ask? By removing it and substituting it. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. The dragon, Scripture tells us, is Satan the devil. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 from the King James Version. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels... Yet in the end, according to Daniel 11.32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their Elohim shall be strong and do exploits. Oh, please don't give up the faith today. Please persevere until that day when we all arise together under the headship of Mashiach to do exploits. This then is why Yeshua HaMashiach proceeds to warn us in a collection of scripture, Matthew 24, verse 4. Now these are various parts of Matthew 24 put together, so I'll try to articulate them as I go. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, the Messiah, and shall deceive many. 11. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ the Messiah, or there believe it not. 24. For false messiahs shall arise, false prophets, and shall great, show great wonders and signs, insomuch that if possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 25. Behold, I have told you before. Regarding then a various serious time for Yahweh's people, he speaks thusly. 15. When ye shall therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the set-apart place, whoso readeth, let him understand. 16. Then let him them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, 17. Let him that is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, verse 20. But pray ye... that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Yes, Messiah addresses a time of great concern stemming fresh from the writings of Daniel, which beg to be understood. He prophesies the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple fulfilled in 70 CE by the Roman ruler Titus and his conquesting armies. Yet all this is but the beginning of sorrows leading to the birth pangs 